after about two years of uh, lockdowns brought about by the global pandemic, we are finally starting to go out again and to gather, albeit in smaller groups. And our very first basic human instinct is to eat and to eat well. Goût de France launches its sixth edition to cater for that craving and to celebrate French culinary tradition in the context of what we call the new normal. Restaurants are reopening everywhere in the world to save our favorite dishes while taking into account healthy eating and sustainable practices, considering the immense value of our natural and agricultural resources. Could there be a better time to share with Filipino friends the French gastronomy, which is part of our UNESCO intangible heritage? This year in particular, Goût de France puts the spotlight on the Loire Valley, known as the Garden of France. It is famous for the many beautiful castles in the region. Historically, these castles offered a luxurious setting for fine dishes, for the gastronomic delight of the royal family. Goût de France brings this feast to the Philippines, thanks to the special menus created by eight participating chefs in Metro Manila. We are very fortunate that one of them, Chef Didier Dorwe, is joining us for this new Cultural Thursday to take us through French gastronomy, uniqueness, its flavors, and its respectful and environmentally friendly cuisine. To all the chefs who participated in the sixth edition of Goût de France, merci beaucoup. We hope you will participate again next year it is going to be a very special year. It will be the 75th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between the Philippines and France. Goût de France is a collaboration and I would like to thank the Alliance Française de Manille and the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Philippines for their support this year. I take this occasion to invite you to follow Behind the Cuisine, an online event organized by the Chamber on October 27th and 23rd which will explore the future of food and beverage industry in the new normal, and which will celebrate the marriage of French and Filipino flavors through a live cooking show hosted by Elwa Yusan. Also, please stay with us till the end of this event as the Alliance Française reveals the lucky winners of my favorite French food moment video contest. Talking about all this makes me feel hungry. Thank you very much for joining us in this year's Goût de France, and I wish you a pleasant and yummy evening. Bon appétit! La cuisine, c'est pas que euh, aujourd'hui acheter un produit, le cuisiner, le préparer et puis le donner aux convives. Cette gastronomie durable, c'est avant tout euh, bah, respecter le sol, respecter les gens qui m'entourent. C'est mes équipes, on a énormément besoin d'eux. Toutes les personnes qui nous rejoignent ont cette même volonté euh, d'être euh, sensibilisées par rapport à cet impact sur l'environnement. Respecter les convives euh, qui poussent la porte de mon établissement et qui ont envie de découvrir justement une cuisine engagée avec des produits euh, ultra locaux. Je suis un terroiriste engagé auprès de nos petits producteurs. Ça, c'est du céleri doré, ouais. Et puis derrière, tu as, as la variété locale, là, le violet de Tours. Ces producteurs ont une vraie volonté de, de, de faire des jolis produits. Et ce qui est important, c'est justement d'aller à leur rencontre, euh, de valoriser leurs produits, de les mettre en avant, de les emmener un petit peu avec nous dans cette aventure de, de, de la haute gastronomie. Je me suis donné la peine euh, avec mes équipes euh, de faire de la vente à emporter. Cette vente à emporter, elle a bien fonctionné. Elle nous a permis de pouvoir rouvrir avec un, un dynamisme. Et finalement, quand on a rouvert, on a eu un engouement. Ma philosophie de la gastronomie, c'est avant tout une philosophie humaine, bienveillante, respectueuse. Euh, elle passe par cette partie végétale qui est très importante dans ma cuisine. Aujourd'hui, on travaille essentiellement que des poissons de Loire, donc des poissons qui évoluent sur le sable et les galets avec des chairs très fines, euh, des poissons qu'on ne connaît trop peu. Ce qu'on peut retenir de tout ça, c'est que euh, dans un département, dans une région, on a tellement de richesses.
Bonsoir, mesdames, mesdemoiselles, messieurs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our little cooking demonstration. So this evening, you have received a four-course meal. The first course is a velouté de champignons, mixed mushroom velouté soup. Our second course is a fish course, uh, which is a poached fish on a fondue de poireau, or otherwise uh, leeks, basically. And our third course is the meat course, which is our pork cooked with uh, chenin blanc, cream, and prunes served with a pureed potato, creamy potatoes, and jardinière of legumes, uh, basically uh, fresh vegetables. And the dessert, a petit gift fondant with a coulis of melon fruit sauce with uh, enhanced with a little pointe. Two of the courses that you're eating tonight, I will show you how I prepare them. The first one is the fish. So here we have some of the elements that have been prepared uh, for the first part of the recipe. We start with some fish, head, bones, basically what, what uh, you would have left after you fillet a fish. You would have the uh, bones and, and various parts of the fish that you cannot use uh, on, your, on your main dish, but this is what we need for the stock. So, we have this, we have an onion, half an onion, we have some parsley, but stems only, and a little bit of celery. Now the reason why we don't use the leaves, but only the stems from the parsley, is the parsley leaves would actually make the stock um, darker, it would uh, cloud it. Uh, now, we call this a fumé rather than a stock, it's fish. And one of the, unlike with meat stock, we're going to use white wine along with water to create the, the stock. So we start by putting our fish in the pan. Parsley, celery. Onion. Some lemon zest. Now make sure when you zest the lemon that you do not include the white peel, the white part, only the very top layer, the green, the, the yellow part, as the peel is very bitter. Slices. Very salt. Now I'm going to add white wine. Now you want to use a dry wine for this. Cover. Now meat stocks have to cook for long periods. Get the flavor, uh, especially beef and green stock. Chicken, less, but still, it takes time. Uh, hours really for beef stock to develop all of its flavors. But for fish, it's the opposite. 20 to 30 minutes is more it takes to create the flavor of stock. So, this is our first step. And this would be one of the, the base, basically, that we will use to poach our fish with the additional white wine and a few additional um, flavorings, ingredients that will form the base for the poaching liquid that will be absorbed into the fish. Stock is ready. Now we will strain the liquid. Mm -hmm. 
Now you can refrigerate or freeze this part. Ready to poach our fish. We have cod, cod long, boneless, already clean, white wine again. about one, almost half a bottle uh, of white wine, 350 ml. We're going to add about 100 ml of our fish today. Fresh time. Very finely sliced shallots. Shallots. Fish. Slice. Fresh lemon. Depending on the size of the lemon, this is quite hard. It should be uh, half to one lemon. White pepper. The reason we use white pepper for fish, uh, the color of black. Like dirt, I guess, for lack of better work. Uh, but uh, you can use black pepper. Uh, I use always fresh pepper, black fresh. Uh, the flavor is so much better when you buy already milled pepper. It's just no comparison. Really. Salt, sea salt. This actually comes from Pengasina. I buy it directly from, from the region there, it actually comes uh, on a truck, <laughs> in a big bag. Now we're going to cover this. Just a little stock. Cover the fish. Now, gentle heat. The one thing you don't want is this to boil in high heat. Uh, it should be just barely. Barely, uh, we call it frémisson in, in, in French. Frémir, it's like a, a light. It's just before the boiling point, basically. Uh, it will keep the fish more tender. Uh, now, what what is happening here is the flavors from this poaching liquid is going to be absorbed into the fish, and uh, so it will give moisture and flavor to our, to our fish. So this will take 20 to 30 minutes. Now there are two ways of doing this. On the stove, or you can also transfer it in an oven at 160, 180. 180 is fine. Just again, make, making sure that the temperature of the liquid doesn't get so hot uh, that it starts to bubble. So, I, for today, I will just do it on the stove so you can see the process. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so now about 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes actually, the fish is done. You can tell by touching slightly firm. You don't want it to get overcooked. Uh, just it, should, it will become too flaky. It's not raising. And next, we're going to work on our leek. Mix already. Now, using a decent quality wine, uh, you know, when you cook, you don't have to use always expensive wines. There are exceptions. Uh, it depends on the dish. You know, uh, some dishes require more special wines. But in general, it should be a wine that you can still drink. It shouldn't be something that is just so poor in quality that uh, you wouldn't want to drink it. Or else, why would you cook with it? Because the flavor of the wine will ultimately flavor your dish. So it's important that it's a decent wine. Uh, now the meat course that you will be having tonight has been cooked with Chenin Blanc, which is a really uh, very special wine. So it definitely makes a difference in the dish. Our next ingredient, fresh cream. French. And now we're ready for plating. your meal, we prepare the special dessert, still from the Valley, Val de Loire uh, region. And this dessert actually takes its name from the city where it's from, uh, Pithiviers. Um, actually, there are two versions of this cake. One goes back to a couple thousand years, uh, and it really started as a collaboration of sorts between Gaul, which is basically uh, the country of France, before it was France, was called Gaul, and the Romans. Now, Gaul had wheat, and the Romans had almonds. And between the two, they created this combination of bread, cake, uh, with, with flour from Gaul and the almonds from, from the Romans. This was sort of the, uh, the beginning of this cake, uh, the, the, the pitivier, uh, called fondant. In the 18th century, puff pastry was created, invented, and a new version of this cake was made with the puff pastry, which is more, more, more well known throughout France. Um, it actually looks a lot like what we call Galette des Rois. Uh, it's a puff pastry with almond cream, very flaky on the outside, and then of course with the almond cream inside. Uh, this version is, you will find throughout France in all pastry shops. Uh, whereas the fondant version, the older type, is really more locally known in the city of Pithiviers. Hope you enjoyed your dinner and let's do this again sometime soon. Au revoir.
Bonjour. Donc, when we think about the Loire Valley, the first thing that comes to mind is the kings of France, because uh, since early 14th century, they established their uh, summer uh, vacation palace in this region, which was much more uh, mild and uh, good weather than in Paris. But also, of course, uh, Loire Valley is well known for all these wines. It's a very big uh, area, around 70,000 uh, hectares, 400 kilometers from east to west, and it includes more than 80 different appellations. The region is divided into four main areas, the Pays Nantais, the Anjou, Touraine and Centre. Center. The Pays Nantais is the western part of the, uh, the region and it includes white wine mostly made of Melon de Bourgogne with the famous Muscadet. Anjou Saumur is considered the left middle Loire. Most of the grapes grown through the Loire are white, but we start to have red wine in this area mainly on Cabernet Franc and Gamay. The Touraine, it's home of the Vouvray wine. The region has the most uh, varieties of grapes grown in the Loire. Chenin Blanc, Cabernet Franc, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Malbec and Gamay. However, Vouvray is known almost exclusively for his, its Chenin Blanc. And the region of Centre is mostly uh, of Pinot Noir, and Sauvignon Blanc with the famous uh, Sancerre and uh, Pouilly Fumé. People agree that the, the best Loire Reds are produced from Cabernet Franc, which is famous appellation of Bourgueil, Chinon, Saint-Nicolas de Bourgueil, Saumur Champigny. This appellation border the Loire River. While Saumur Champigny is fashionable, Bourgueil can be the beef feast, longest living Loire, red of all. While the lighter Saint-Nicolas, the Bourgueil is rarely, rarely seen outside the region. Chinon can often be aged for decades, and an old Chinon is a rare pleasure. Other red varieties are cultivated within the Loire Valley, include Pinot Noir, Malbec, called Cote Noir, and Gamay. World-class white wines are produced throughout the length of the Loire Valley, but differ according to grape varieties, soil type, and region. In the far west, by the estuary of the Atlantic, dry white are produced on granite and schist soil using Melon de Bourgogne. Moving up river, Chenin Blanc, also known as Pinot de la Loire, takes over while the east, especially along the bank of the river Cher, is Sauvignon Blanc. Other grapes varieties include Chardonnay, Pinot Gris and Romorantin. Most regions of the Loire Valley produce white wine. Some stand out as being amongst the best in the world, Sancerre and Pouilly Fumé, produced by Sauvignon Blanc. Around the city of Tours, Chenin Blanc comes into its own while the wines of Vouvray and Mont-Louis-sur-Loire being particularly appreciated, Chenin Blanc continues down the river through Savenière towards Angers. Muscadet, the Sèvres Men, and Muscadet sur Lee are best drunk young and fresh with oyster and seafood. The Loire Valley sparkling. Sparkling wines are made in the Loire Valley in much the same way than in Champagne with its decidedly unchampagne like flavor and fantastic low price. Other grapes using in some appellations include Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, while red grape varieties such as Pinot Noir may be used to create rosé. Sweet wine are also produced in the Loire Valley. They result from the concentration of uh, natural sugar in the grapes during a good sunny summer and autumn. Several appellations of the Loire focus for them. Chenin Blanc is the grape mostly used. But Sauvignon Blanc can also produce 
interesting sweet wines and warm yeast. The degree of sweetness varies according to the amount of residual sugar remaining in the wine and a complete range can be found. These uh, moelleux or liqueur wines can last in bottles for decades. Among uh, many uh, appellations, you can find uh, the Coteau du Léon and uh, the Quart de Chaume de Vouvray. Wines are, uh, depending on the, the soil mostly and, uh, and the climatic conditions that are in, in effect in the region where they grow. Uh, this region is uh, very specific because you can find the four types of uh, five types of wines which are red, white, rosé, sweet and sparkling. So it's a, a region worth to visit and not only for the wine but of course for the delicious food that you will uh, eat in uh, restaurants all along the way. And of course you can uh, visit the different castles which is uh, very interesting uh, if you like history. So thank you very much and I hope uh, you will have uh, uh, more time to visit France and especially the, the Loire Valley region. Thank you. Bonsoir, my name is Xavier Leroux and I'm the new director of the Alliance Française de Manille. Very happy to be here to promote French culture, French language here uh, with our partners in the Philippines and of course with the French Embassy uh, and the Alliance Française de Cebu. Tonight we welcome you for a very special event. Tonight we are very happy to celebrate Good of France together with the French Embassy. We are featuring two musical artists who will be performing French classics from Debussy Forêt, Massenet and Godard. We are very happy to uh, host tonight two very prominent uh, artists. The first one is a pianist, his name is Alejandro Consolacion II. And the second one is a cellist and his name is Giuseppe André Diestro. He studied in Dijon, so he has a strong connection to France and his father, Mr. Nonoy Diestro, also had uh, a connection to France uh, and uh, studied in France as well. Stay with us until the end of the concert as we will be announcing the winners of our online contest, which is my favorite French food moment. Lastly, if you want to study with us, you can still do it. Our last session is going to start in a few days, October 25th. You have all the informations of, on our website, which of course you know, www.alliance.ph. Bonsoir, good evening.
Bonsoir. Thank you for watching with us this month's edition of Les Jeudis Culturels proposed by the French Embassy in the Philippines and the Alliance Française de Mali. Tonight, we are going to um, announce the winners of our online contest called My Favorite French Food. And so the third place goes to Lewana Diwa, who shared with us her favorite gratin dauphinois and ratatouille. The second place goes to Johan Bui Kaye, who featured a very romantic éclair au chocolat video. And for the first prize, we have two winners, two people who will enjoy a French evening for two at the Alliance Française de Mani. And the two lucky winners are... Camille Lara, with her uh, lovely Ashi Parmentier entry, very lively video. And Ai Tadena, with her humoristic Cocovin dish. So we will uh, get in touch with you on how to claim your prize and for now you can watch the winning videos. Bonne nuit everyone and see you in the next edition of Les Jeudis Culturels. Bonjour, je m'appelle Johan Oshante. Oh, what do we have here? A hot refreshment on a sunny day pairing it with a sweet pastry? I really love Eclair. The whipped cream and the dough is soft, also the chocolate icing is the best. The sweetness for me is perfect, just like how I want the sweet level should be. Bon appétit! Enjoying my eclair after studying a lot of hours is the best feeling. I would eat two of these, but mom just bought me one, so maybe next time? Well, that's all for today. Au revoir, bonne journée! Bonjour et bienvenue dans cette vidéo où je vais parler de la nourriture parce que moi j'adore faire à manger. Oh mais tu cuisines même pas toi, tu commandes tout le temps. Ah oui, il a raison. Du coup, quand j'ai le temps, je prépare le seul plat français que je sais faire et c'est la parmentier. Alors c'est un plat simple qui contient de la purée de pommes de terre, de la viande et des fois du breadcrumbs. Je sais pas dire breadcrumbs en français en fait. Mais pourquoi on dit Hachi Parmentier Ça c'est pour rendre hommage à Antoine Augustin Parmentier qui s'est rendu compte que les pommes de terre étaient bonnes pour la santé et qu'on peut aussi le manger parce que avant en France les pommes de terre c'était plutôt pour les cochons et l'Hachi Parmentier je préfère le manger avec la famille avec du vin rouge santé et salut c'est que du jeu en fait. Le matin, bien que Paris soit gris, c'est comme la plage en Californie, avec toi. 
Tu me regardes, ça fait vriller le soleil, je ne peux pas expliquer. L'esprit s'est explosé. Tu as approché je, mon cœur. Je vais vous présenter ma nourriture préférée. Alors, qu'est-ce que ma nourriture préférée On va dire que ça va être euh, la raclette. Donc, euh, mon plat français favori, ce serait euh, les crêpes. Mon plat favori de la cuisine française, c'est un dessert, et ce sont les macarons. Bah, à propos de mon plat français préféré, je pense que, que c'est la poule au pot. Le matin, chaque jour, tu me dis que je suis...